All right, and if you take a look behind me, you'll see where traffic is backed up for miles. And the reason why is actually right in front of me, you have a collision between a semi truck and a pickup truck. These cars and flowers represent the memory of 63 year old Deborah McGee, whose body was found lifeless inside her home. Now, as you can see there, Mr. Parker did not have anything that he wanted to say to the media, but he did try to apologize in the courthouse. Now, when dealing with road hazards like snow, Traffic officials say that motorists need to slow down and use caution on their way to work. In front of a crowd of over 100 people, Governor Phil Bryan appointed Mississippi's first female senator. For this occasion, I would say to Senator Cochran, as the master said to the servant, well done, my true and faithful servant. Well done, Thad Cochran. Those were Governor Phil Bryant's words before naming Senator Thad Cochran's replacement for the soon-to-be vacant Senate seat. My fellow Mississippians, please help me welcome the next United States Senator from Mississippi, our dear friend, Cindy Hyde Smith. It was really hard to give up the Commissioner of Agriculture position because that's obviously, you know, it's been my life and my love. But when you get called to this position, you just be submissive. And you do, if you want to be in the center of God's will, you have to be submissive. I look forward to it. I am very anxious, very eager to get to D.C. The beef cattle farmer from Brookhaven is no stranger to Mississippi politics. She served as the state senator for a number of years as a Democrat before switching parties in 2010 and running for agriculture commissioner. I hope I can inspire young people to work hard to achieve their goals because the American dream is alive and well in Mississippi. Smith aims to be the sixth U.S. Senator to represent Mississippi in the past 71 years. When asked about her expected opponent, Senator Chris McDaniel, Smith did not have much to say. We don't know what, you know, qualifying hadn't even gotten here yet, so we don't know how many will be in there. So uh, I think it's just a little preliminary to even address those right now. However, Senator McDaniel doesn't think so, releasing a statement earlier today saying, Today I was troubled to learn Mississippi Governor Phil Bryant dutifully followed the orders of the Washington establishments, Mitch McConnell, by appointing Sidney Hyde Smith to fill the temporary vacancy created by Senator Thad Cochran's retirement. Because we're going to have some rough days ahead, but you know what? That's okay. And just like that, a race seems to be brewing in the Republican Party for later in the year. Senator Thad Cochran is expected to step down April 1st, setting off a special election that will happen in November. I'm Corey Howard reporting in Brookhaven, Fox 23 News. When the unthinkable happens, you need to be prepared. Being prepared for a situation in case it was to happen. Um, most people don't think about if you're walking in the mall and something was to happen. That's something being an active shooter. An active shooter on site and killing everything who stands in front of the barrel of their gun. causing many people to panic. However, Hattiesburg police warns residents, panicking is the wrong reaction. First thing you do is be aware and always be aware of your surroundings. Uh, know who's coming in, know who's going out, know what's happening. Being aware is the first step in surviving a mass shooting. Next. Now, if you can disengage from the scene, that's when you need to start prepping by denying the uh, uh, threat to coming to you. That's where you can put yourself in certain offices, rooms, barricade doors. And when all the above fails, then you have to go to defend, whatever by whatever means necessary. You may have to get a um, cup of hot coffee. Um, you may have to um, get a laptop. You may have to get a pair of scissors. Anything that you could use to defend yourself. The only unfair fight there is is the fight that you lose. And just this year, there have been more than 270 mass shootings in the U.S., which is the reason why Hattiesburg Police Department believes that local business owners should educate themselves how to react in such a situation. Once again, with them going through this training, they can prevent a lot from happening. If it's going on, they can get away from it. If it's not going on, they can um, avoid it to begin with. Vaping is one of the latest trends. Supporters say that it is a safer alternative to smoking. But Bear Owns Vapor Co. owner Tracy Martin says a new FDA policy could send the industry up in smoke. This is where customers used to come and try different vape flavors for free. But new regulations have changed that. 
Well, the regulations that went in uh, this week will affect us to where we have to charge for people to try our flavors. Uh, we're no longer allowed to give free samples. So while the vape sellers will no longer be able to provide free samples, Martin says he will provide an inexpensive membership instead. You will no longer be able to do that without purchasing a membership card, uh, which is a dollar for a year. The new regulations prohibit vape sellers from handling the device once they are sold to the customer. So if it breaks, say you needed uh, something on a fix, we can no longer do that. And when it comes to their sales pitch, what it says is that we cannot advertise or state that e-cigarettes are, quote, healthier than traditional tobacco cigarettes. Views about whether these regulations are necessary or not will vary depending on who you ask. Yeah, I, I'm for regulation. I hear a lot of people say that they don't think that regulation is good, but I think without regulations, things will be a lot much worse than what they are. The effects aren't known as well as the tobacco use, so jury's still out. Regardless of whether who does or doesn't like it, these regulations are here to stay, at least for now. Leaving the pressure on vaping companies to stay in business. Corey Howard, KSLA News 12. Chris Herron. A once promising basketball star watched his future and his dreams burn right before his very own eyes. There was a point in my life when I overdosed for the fourth time that I truly believe I'd never make it. From playing on the same basketball court against players like Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen to living his dream by becoming a Boston Celtic, Heron says addiction robbed him of everything. Heron said his addiction started when he was a high school freshman. He would sneak and drink his father's beers and even smoke some marijuana. Eventually, by the age of 33, Heron would go on to try Oxycontin, Vicodin, Percocets, heroin, cocaine, and crystal meth. It's a uh, it's life or death, you know, and many people suffer from it, and many people will suffer because of it. After breaking his battle with addiction August 1, 2008, Heron now travels the country warning people about the deadly dangers of addiction. There's a lot of strength and struggle, and I, I was able to find that. Um, so if I can pass that to someone else, that's what it's all about. Drug overdoses kill more Americans each year than both car crashes and gun-related homicides. Most overdoses come from opioids. In 2017, more than 200 Mississippians died from a drug overdose related to opioids, which eventually prompted the state to bring in more speakers like Heron. Well, we know that opiate abuse and addiction is prevalent in our country. It's also very, uh, has impacted our state and locally here in the Pine Belt. A lot of people have uh, uh, problems with addiction and we've seen many overdoses in the area as well. It's heartbreaking and no one wants to go through that and no one really understands how important awareness to this drug addiction is. It's okay to have a good time, it's okay to have fun, but know when to stop. It's always a time and place to do everything. Um, I was given an unbelievable gift, and uh, someone took the time to extend their hand and offer to pick me up, and I wanted to give that back. And now Heron gives back by delivering 250 speeches a year, educating people about the deadly disease called addiction. Corey Howard, Fox 23 News. We've spent you know, 20 years in the Army. They don't do it because uh, just for the paycheck. It's because they love something, uh, and they love their families, and, and they love the soldiers they serve with. 20 years of blood, sweat, and tears. Just happy. I was about to cry, you know. A big, <laughs> bad scout about to cry, because, you know, retiring. But it, it's, it's worth it, you know, just to go home now and see this woman every day when I open the door. You know, that's, that's all I want now. That's my dream come true. After 20 years, Sergeant Johnson, along with five other soldiers, are putting their combat boots up and retiring from the United States Army. Camp Shelby and Hattiesburg held a special celebration of service for these six soldiers. We're the Army and proudly proclaim, first to fight for To see them depart is sad, uh, but uh, we're also happy to know that they've, they've made it and uh, they're going to move on to, uh, to another chapter of their life with their families. It's going to be rewarding as well because I get to have him and see him all the time and not have to worry about where he's at when I'll hear from him for days months so I'm blessed to have him home finally. So this will be the first and this will be the last and only time that he ever put in one or anything for you. I can finally say to my son daddy's coming home. Thank you. Scott South. Gary Owen. Families reunited for good with no more duties left. Mission complete.
Corey Howard, Fox 23 News.